<laughs> well, I know, I know what you're here for, and let's just dive in. This man has one of the most classic country careers and voices of our time, and I cannot wait to sit down and chat with Mr. Bo Bandy. Come on out, Bo. All right. Want to have a seat? Yes. Let's just, so okay. We're just, it's just like we're in my living room, Mo. I just see it. Yeah. I feel like I'm in your I living room, and these are our guests. That's yes. That's right. I didn't make any snacks or anything, but we're okay, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it'd be fun. Yeah. Well, we are tickled to spend a little time with you, sir. How many? Is it? This isn't your first country music cruise, right? No, no. I've. I've this is. Uh, I think my third. Yeah. Third one. What do you like about it? Why do you? Why do you say yes when they ask? You know, I, I really like, we all the entertainers don't get a chance to get, get together that much. That's true. And it's so good to, to see the other entertainers. Yeah. And uh, I think we're all fans of each other. Isn't that the you truth? Know. And so we get to hang out a little bit. But the, the good thing is the, the great uh, talent that's right. on these shows. Right. Oh, I, mean, I know. Well, he's in the top of the list. Know it. Yeah, they know it. Yeah. That's why it's a packed house today and a sold out cruise. Yeah. Who have you gotten to see, or who do you want to see as a fan of them on this boat? On oh, this boat, I got a bunch of Neil McCoy. Is yeah, he's coming up tonight. <laughs> yeah, one of the greatest entertainers I've ever seen Isn't in my that life. The truth? And uh, oh, we got all kinds of T.G. Shepherds from is my dear friend mm. David Frizzell, you know, That's and uh, just so many of my friends that uh, we actually do hang out together quite a bit. Me and T.G. And, some of us, but yeah, that's the good part is just seeing the talent that's on here. Yeah, I agree with you. And the food ain't bad either, is it? Well, I try to keep, <laughs> I'm still hanging in there. I, I've, been, I've been at it now. I, I have actually been in the business 50 years. Wow. And, uh, wow. I started a little band down in Texas and uh, in 1968, so I guess I might be over 50, but uh, I, I was four years old, see, and they, they just held me up to the microphone and I sang right there. But I started out years ago and I had the pleasure, uh, which I guess is one of the, the good things about getting old, is I had the pleasure to open shows for, for um, uh, Ernest Tubb, Bob Wills. I opened a show for Bob Wills. No. Yes. Uh, Ernest Tubb and uh, Roy Acuff, all these great, great people. And I was called one day at the WSM and to do an interview. And uh, it was a radio state uh, program that was going all over the world. So they called me out to go do it. I went out there and Ernest Tubb and Roy Acuff and me did that interview. Oh my God, I got a picture I, I'm so proud of. But uh, I have had the opportunity to be with all these people, and what a thrill that's been. I mean, to, and to tell, you know, people say, well, what was this guy like? I, well, I, I got to be with him, yeah. You know, that's, I'm, I'm not you, please don't think I am, but that's the one thing that people ask me, just because I get to talk to folks like you, they're like, yeah. well, who's the nicest, and who's the this? And, yeah. and, you know, Mo, it's been my experience that no one, no one has yeah. ever mistreated me, said anything, you know, bad mm -hmm. about me. Yeah. Country music artists mm -hmm. just have this thread through them all. That well, they, yeah. You know, I tried being a jerk for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, you failed, I, I really worked at it. And I <laughs> you just, failed. It just didn't fit. I just couldn't do it. I, I tried to insult people and everything, and they just, just didn't work. I saw Mo uh, yesterday, and I thought I was bringing him out on the stage by the pool. And he pulled me over and he goes, I'm, I'm probably late telling you this. And I said, what, Mo? And he goes, I've changed my name. Yeah. You know, he's not, you thought that I was going to be I the one. I thought you was going to introduce I'm me. Gonna go, yeah. And I said, hey, Phil. I was going to call you Phil. But oh, we Phil. Didn't. Phil. <laughs> Phil Randy, everybody. Isn't that awful? <laughs> I like to miss when people are going to introduce me. They, uh, a lot of times people will say, uh, what should I say about you? You know, when oh. I bring you on. I say, well, have you got 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I'll fill you in here. You know. Well, I got plenty to talk to you about, and, um, okay. and be thinking too, y'all, when we finish up, um, be thinking about a question that you may have for, for Mo, and just know too that if you want something signed or you want to say hello, 
he's going to st graciously stick around for sure. you. So we're, he's making that happen for you, but mm -hmm. we're gonna take your questions in a little bit. You know, reading your bio and knowing what I know about you, starting out in Oklahoma. Texas. Texas, excuse me, Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't read too well, did I? Yeah. Um, Texas, and you are a sheet metal worker and a bull rider? I, I rode bulls when I was a kid. Um, I was raised on a ranch. My grandfather had leased a ranch uh, that was in, having a lawsuit or something. So he got this ranch real cheap. And so I worked, I was a uh, cowboy when I was a kid. And I wanted to be Gene Archery. I wanted to be one of these singing cowboys and rides his horse and does yeah, all yeah. that. And uh, I, uh, so I was raised around a ranch. And yeah. then I, I started uh, riding bulls. And my, my parents, my dad, my parents, my dad, and my grandfather all rodeoed, yeah. and uh, so we were raised up in the in the sport of rodeo. And I rode bulls in bareback broncs for a little while, and I had to quit because I had back problems. Mm. I got a big yellow streak right down the back of it. Oh, right now, yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's funny actually. But I have a brother that uh, Mike Bandy who went to the national finals seven times as a bull rider. Wow. And so Mike uh, had a great career. And one of the greatest things about my career was back when he was riding at the time when my records were all hot. And I played, after I cut Bandy the rodeo clown, I played every rodeo in the world. I bet. And my brother rode in a lot of these rodeos. Okay. And uh, so I met with a, a brother act going on there. We we played um, the Houston Astrodome at the yeah, right, right. Houston Rodeo, yeah. and they brought my my parents in and oh. uh, had them in a box seat and all, and they were so proud. And my brother actually won the bull riding that night. Oh, wow. and I I sang so. Oh, your folks we, were just proud of y'all. Oh, right? they were so proud, and we we had a lot of opportunities like that Cheyenne and different places where we would be in the same spot. But my part of it was really easy. You just go sing. Wow. He had to sit down on one of them bulls. <laughs> and, uh, and hang on. And hang on, right, yeah. What was your childhood like? I mean, you, you, you have such sparkle in your eyes when you talk about your family. Yeah, I had a great, great family. And we, uh, like I say, we were raised around a ranch. We uh, rode a horse all, all the time. Uh, we uh, just were cowboys, raised cattle, branded mm -hmm. cattle, took care of them, built fence, did all that stuff. I worked uh, as far back as I can remember. I had a job. Good. I did something, yeah. you know, and uh, I think that's very important. Tell the story, if you will, and you all may know this already, but and especially if you've gotten his book, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But tell the story from the '80s when somebody gave you a break. Do you remember that? When I got a, yeah. a V break, V break that you mm -hmm. got, I think it was like in 1982, maybe. Yeah, it was 1972. 72. Okay. Yes. I'm wrong about that too. And I was, uh, see, I'm older than you thought, Sam. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take 82. No, I was in San Antonio. I had a little, uh, I had a little band in mm -hmm. San Antonio, and I played all the honky tonks and the bars. We played places that had the screen wire across the front and we had a hole in that screen wire where we could throw stuff back at them <laughs> so we played the places the joints and uh you know if you put and and the, one of the funny things about that uh they used to tell us you know if a fight breaks out breaks out play a fast song <laughs> something real fast so them cowboys would rather dance to a fast one than fight. Yeah. I said, well. That's hysterical. <laughs> so they start fighting, and we're just going to town up there. But we played all, all the bars, and a guy named Ray Baker came to San Antonio on a hunting trip. And I, I was so determined to get in this business. I had been to Nashville already several times, walked down the street looking for songs, uh, and I was at that time I had the fire in my belly that I would walk through a brick wall to get, be able to get a shot at a record deal or something like that. He came to town, I went to his room and I just knocked on the door and said, I'm Mo Bandy and I hear you uh, producer in Nashville and uh, uh, can you help me out? So we talked 
and I played in a place that night. He come to see me, and so we went and recorded together uh, several albums, and I paid uh, for my albums. And uh, yeah, that that was an interesting part because yeah. you know artists typically don't do that. Right. You know the record labels. I don't. Recommend. But you put your own skin in the game. I put everything I had in it, and I even hawked my furniture the last time. <laughs> Uh, and I just, and boy, if I would, and I cut a song that last time uh, called I Just Start Hating Cheating Songs Today. And that song took off and it scared me to death. I was, I was a sheet metal worker. I was working uh, every week. I was actually running a job. I was a boss. My dad was, was the superintendent of the company. And my dad would tell me, he said, boy, you got a good job here. He said, Take that guitar and wrap it around a tree, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, <laughs> so it wasn't long after that to my dad sitting up in the front of the bus going, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I recorded with Ray and we signed a contract with a um, label, GRC Records, and and it took off, and then we had several, and then we, then we recorded Bandy the Rodeo Clown, and that really opened up my career. You have had a lot of hit songs. Mm -hmm. Would you, um, I wrote them down, because I don't want to mess them up. Would you just kind of go through and, and just kind of paint the picture of either the writing of it, or what mm -hmm. it meant to you while you recorded it, what people have said about it? Let's yeah. just kind of do something lightning fast and see if we can get through some of your hits. Well, you know, one thing that we did that I'm so proud of is the fact that every spare moment I had, I went in the studio and recorded. And so I've got a lot of records out there. Mm -hmm. I love that when the royalties come in. That's a pretty good deal. But I might not have the, a ton of the huge songs, but I have a lot of them. Well, you've won a lot of awards too. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around your, your bio because it's you know, you, you see you, and you I get to talk to you at the Opry or in Nashville or whenever, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you really get a chance to sit down and talk to someone, you can see what they're made of, and I'm just thrilled. I want to go through some of these songs, if we can. Okay. Okay, let's see. So tell me about Bandy the Rodeo Clown. My brother was having a real good year in bull riding, and I was playing uh, a lot, all over the country. And I talked to Whitey Schaefer, who mm -hmm. uh, wrote a lot of my songs. And he was just practically writing songs just for me at that particular time. And I said, I need a rodeo song because mm -hmm. my brother's doing so good. So about a month later, I got a call one night in the middle of the night. And I said, who is this? And he said, this Lefty. And I said, Lefty who? And he said, Lefty Frizzell, my hero. He said, Whitey and I wrote that song. And I said, what song? He said, that rodeo song you're looking for. And Lefty sang a little bit of that over the phone. And I, I went to Nashville, and it's my first number one record. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's Joe Bucks. Yeah. That's Joe Bucks. David Perdell now, we talk about that all the time, you know. <laughs> That's but me. What a thrill that was. Yeah. He just sang something over the phone to you. you know, yeah. Yes, I'm good. That's oh, it. That's it. That's the well, one. Well, Lefty could have sang Happy Birthday to me, yeah, and I would have been knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hank Williams, You Wrote My Life. A uh, guy named Paul Kraft wrote that song, and I, um, from the beginning of my career, I, I, and I always loved Hank Williams Sr., mm -hmm. and uh, I had a sound that sounded similar to Hank Williams, and uh, he wrote that song, and uh, it was uh, about my hero, Hank Williams, and it, it's been a huge song for me. It's been real, real yeah, different. Yeah, indeed it has. Americana. Americana is a song that was written. Uh, Jerry Kennedy found that song when he was producing the records. And uh, that song was uh, written originally about a, a truck driver that goes mm -hmm. in all these different towns. And we turned it, changed it to a... Uh, um, to a regular person going. But it talks about going into these small towns and seeing the, the statue of uh, the unknown soldier and the American flag and the little courthouse and all the things that is really 
American. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you folks, I am very American. Absolutely. And I want you to know that right on. Yeah. But that song has been so good to me because I have had thousands of people in an audience singing it with mm -hmm. me. And uh, I campaigned with the Bushes, and I would go on, uh, on a, one of our rallies. We would go, I'd go and sing Americana, mm -hmm. and then, ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, George, George Bush. Bush. Yeah. So it's been so big for me like that. And a lot of times on holidays, Fourth of July, different holidays, they'll play it quite a bit. But I'm so proud that I got a song about our great country. Amen to that, brother. Amen. Yeah. All right, one more. How about It's a Cheating Situation? Well, I recorded that song. Sonny Throckmorton wrote it. I recorded that song, and uh, we felt like we needed a lady on it. I originally cut it just by myself. We felt like we needed a lady on it. And we tried actually a couple of ladies and it just wasn't, they were great, but it just wasn't right for yeah. the song. Mm -hmm. And Janie Fricky come in and just nailed it, boy. Oh, boy and I <laughs> I, it just knocked us out. That was song of the year in 1979 wow. at the ACM Awards. Okay. Yeah. And, oh. uh, yeah, that, that was big That's record. a big one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that song I won, uh, uh, song of the year that year, and I won duo of the year with Joe. So wow. that was a big year for me. It was a very big year. When we were standing backstage talking, um, we were chatting about his book. Do y'all have his book, Lucky Me? Yeah. Well, okay. All right. All right. What I okay? I wrote a cookbook. Did you? Now it's not this. It's a cookbook. You know, yeah. it's like stir mm -hmm. until blended and all right. that stuff. I mean, recipes and things. Right. And just writing that mo was hard. Yeah. I mean, what did you think as you were taking off on this? Well, Scott England, who is a great writer, who's written some really good, but has Bill Golden's book right now. Uh, he would come to my house, and I live over in Missouri. He would come to my house, and we would sit on the, the porch for hours yeah. just talking. And I, I would get a, a story. And, and it'd lead to another story, and to another story. And uh, I really liked the way he put it all together, and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize a lot of stuff I've done until it, you write a book, you Isn't know? Isn't that the truth? And it just, uh, I think I've been in it so long, I've just had the opportunity, just like being on this cruise, to do so many things. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, and since I wrote the book, I have got enough ideas <laughs> that I remember for another book. I told him, I said, we might have to do another one. But uh, I brought up a lot of good memories. A lot of good news. This is just a great book if you want to get it. It's Mo Bandy, Lucky Me. There may be one or two over in the gift shop in the shopping area, but I think they're getting sold out, don't you think? We had some in there, and I think they're sold out. But MoBandy.com, you can get them. You can get them. And it's in its second printing. Uh, we printed, printed up 20 of them, and I'll tell you, they went just like hot <laughs> Did he just say we printed? You just <laughs> went right the way. I'm telling you, it's amazing. But, you know, <laughs> You're a hoot. But, but we are in the second printing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Now, what impressed me um, was the foreword. Yeah. Was written by a former first lady. Yes. How did you manage that? And what did you think when you read her words? Oh my goodness, I I love Barbara Bush. She was just yeah. the sweetest yeah. lady in President Bush, yeah. and. Uh, we wrote the book, and Scott England, so much in the book about me campaigning with him and everything, he said, you think Barbara would write the forward? And I said, oh my goodness, I would be, you know, I, I, it's, he said, well, I'll take care of it. So he called off, she said, sure. Really? And she wrote the cutest little story in there. I'm not gonna read it, but you yeah. should get it, and you can but, read it for yourself. Yeah, she wrote the cutest little story, and uh, and I so I was so honored that she wrote that. And, uh, wow. But I spent a lot of times with him. I had some great memories of things I did, or big rallies. Mm -hmm. You know, I rode in a fire truck in Cincinnati with the ticker tape parade, mm. and all, mm. things like that, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, if you want to uh, know a little bit more about Man uh, Mo Bandy, get that book if you can. Mm -hmm. So what was it 
about this cruise that that you wanted to come I mean you talked about yeah. your seeing all the other folks but do you yeah. do you ever get some time off I guess is what I'm going to ask you are you relaxing on this cruise yes <laughs> I am I, I am and, and that's what another thing about the cruise it's so relaxing yeah. so many things to do yeah. and I you know a lot of people don't like it not many but some don't yeah but I love it to be walking yeah. around in the fans hey how you doing you know this and that's what it's all about I mean fans yeah. and uh you know, it used to be where we was up on stage and all these girls, you know, hollering, screaming. You know, you're up there strutting around like, yeah. Well, it wasn't too much longer and they said, my mama knows who you are. Now it's getting to the point, my grandma knows who you are. Yeah. Oh, my word. What is the one thing, if you can uh, think through, all the many hits, mm -hmm. all the many shows, the people that you cross paths with. Mm -hmm. What's the one story or the one person that just just touched you beyond anything? Mm -hmm. Just laid you right out with whatever you were feeling. Do you recall anything like that? Yeah, I had that moment. I sure did. I was I was sheet metal worker, as I said, and I worked in Temple, Texas, played the joints and everything. Anyway, I had never actually seen I heard him on the radio, but I've never seen a country singer that much in person, right, or right. hardly at all. And uh, I went out to hear, and I told Hank about this many times, I went out to hear Hank Thompson, and I was standing there in front of that stage, and Hank Thompson come out with this big band, had this fancy outfit on, and it was a life changer. I'm standing there going, wow. That's what I want to do. Really? You know? Really? And it changed my life. I, I really, I, I wanted to, and I was so glad that I got to share that story with Hank later on. Wow. But it just awed me. I mean, i never forget that. Good, good, good. Well, we're in awe of getting to spend some time with you. Mm -hmm. 10 number one hits, 40 mm -hmm. top 10 hits, 66 chart hits, five gold albums, ACM, Song of the Year, multiple, multiple, multiple awards. What's left for you that you would love to accomplish? Well, I, you know, I, I am in the middle of doing that right now. Good. I have cut several gospel albums, but I'm cutting a new gospel album. Oh, wow. And we just finished it up, and uh, we're just so proud of the album, and I'm really putting my heart into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bobby Tomlin uh, wrote one that we're going to put out as a single, actually. And uh, so I'm really uh, enjoying that. Oh. I, my mother was so uh, religious. Yeah. My dad, he's a wild drunk. I mean, <laughs> 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 he liked to drink and have a big time. <laughs> but uh, I, I've recorded one already, and then I'm recording this one. And I'm just uh, nice. and my mother played piano, and my dad played guitar and sang. Did you grow up in church? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> and uh, so my mother played all the gospel songs all the time. My dad was singing the old Hank Williams and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yes, um, I'm doing this gospel album, and that's it's really fun. We are going to look for that, sir. Mm -hmm. MoBandy.com is his website. The book is called Lucky Me. I hope you're going to get yours, and I'm lucky that this one's mine. Yes, that's and yours. He handed me this, and I said, please sign it, please sign it. Because, you know, you're a fan. I mean, I'm a fan yeah. first and foremost. This is my job, but that's yeah. why I love my job, because I get to talk with people like you. She gave me $50, and I, I did. Change. I did. I, I did. did. Yeah. Yeah. Would you take some questions from folks in the audience? I sure will. Anybody have a question for I Mo? noticed this man right here. I have It's not on Kindle, and I read Kindle too, but it's not on there. No, you have to get the, the hardcover. Another question I wanted to ask you, did you ever play the Broken Spoke Country? Oh my goodness, I have, boy. That's, that's been there, from, I played it a lot, you know, back in the years, yeah. Boy, we, I, uh, was it Broken Spoke? One of those I, I get emotional talking about. It's where I got my first beer bottle thrown at me. <laughs> It's a very big moment in your career. You know. <laughs> Luckily, it missed me. It hit the top of the stage, went all over the steel guitar player. Oh! But, you know, yeah. Uh, I don't really have a question. I just want to say that the first time I heard the song Americana, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yes, right. And it does. You know, Americana is those little towns where the heart of America is, mm -hmm. where uh, the people that are really true, hardworking, going to church on Sunday, Americans, you know. And uh, I, that's why I'm so proud that I cut the song. Sir? Hey, Mo, when is your uh, gospel? Your gospel album going to be out? We're trying to get it out uh, by uh, the summer, if we can. We're trying to, we got it all mixed and everything. Mm -hmm. well, and by the way, we had the Oak Ridge boys come in and sing with me oh, on yeah? it. Oh, yeah? What'd they sing? And they, we sang an old gospel song. And I, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Like one of those old hymns? Yeah, one of the old hymns. Like old And uh, the Isaacs are going to sing one with me. The Isaacs. Yes. Have y'all so, heard the Isaacs? Yeah. Aren't they great? Oh, and my word. Ben Isaac played bass on the whole thing and sang harmonies on it. But, uh, yeah, and the Oak Ridge Boys, I'm trying to find them on this boat because uh, I want to thank them. <laughs> Have you all seen them? No. Uh, no, I had Maybe they're in the swimming pool. They're hiding out on us. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to thank them for that. Yes. That's right. And, uh, first of all, I've been with a broken stroke, but I didn't know the beer bottle. Yes, yes. <laughs> Joe and I recorded, uh, uh, we are in the midst right now of celebrating our 40th year since we cut Good Old Boys, and we're doing a 40-year reunion tour, and we've been doing that, yeah, and, uh, and that's another story, I don't know how much time we got, but uh, do we have a little time? Sure. Joe, uh, when I, he and I was in England, I'll tell it real quick, and uh, we were doing a tour of England. He said, anybody ever say you look like me? And I said, I hope not. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we went to dinner at the Hard Rock Cafe, oh. believe it or not. This is 40 years ago. And Joe said, Mo and Joe, that sounds like Waylon and Willie. Yeah. So his piano player was with us. And a couple of days later, he came up and he says, I wrote that song. We said, what song? He said, that song. And he said, it's called Good Old Boys. And so that's how that started right there. So we recorded it, and of course the rest is history. Isn't it cool to hear these stories from him? Yeah. How many of you are going to his show? To, to his two shows? It's tomorrow night, right? Uh, tonight. Tonight. Oh, tonight. 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 Okay. Uh, yes. Six and I know, it, I know it's late, but y'all come in. 11.15. 11.15, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. Yes. Okay, we yes, got it. Yes, ma'am, do you have a... Yes. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. We love our people. It's, I've had an interesting life, I sure have. And it's not over Thank yet. You. With Gene Watson, I hate him. I don't like him. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. Joe, uh, Gene and I rib each other all the time. He's one of my best friends. One of the greatest singers around, I guarantee you that. And when you get the book, Gene Watson has a quote on the back, and I'll just read the first sentence because we need to let you go. Yeah. Mo Bandy is the real deal, and I love him to death. When you buy a Mo Bandy or Gene Watson CD, you know exactly what you're going to hear. Real country music. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, he's, he's a dear friend. It has been fun. I wish we could keep him longer, but we, we said we'd only keep you 30 minutes, so and I'll get to talking, and it'll get away from us. Well, I hope you get my book. It's mobandy.com, and uh, if you, I think it might be interesting. Thank you. You are the greatest. Thank you so much. Mo Bandy, everybody. <laughs>